that seething abomination held Rachel by her small, fragile skull as it gazed into the eyes of her terrified younger sister, blood oozing down her cheeks. Audrey looked on in horror as the bear attempted to swallow the skull as it was still attached to the feeble girl's spine. But the most disturbing thing about this attack was the fact that Rachel was still alive when the creature began to eat her. And what was in store for Audrey was even more horrifying. What's up guys? Iceman here. So this story is very nightmarish, so I warn you. But first off, I'd appreciate it if you like this video, subscribe to the page, and pull that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a patron, linked in the description below. So let's get into this chilling tale. It was a treacherous, horrid September evening when the bear took the souls of Rachel and Audrey Weirling. The two young women just began their budding lives of joy and happiness. The grizzly bears of southern Montana are not to be reckoned with. Adult grizzly bears differ from American black bears, Ursus Americanus, in being larger and having a hump above the shoulders, a concave rather than straight or convex facial profile, shorter and more rounded ears, a rump lower than the shoulder hump, and longer, less curved claws, usually evident in the tracks. Identification can be difficult at times, and Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks has developed an online bear ID test to help people better distinguish between American black bears and grizzly bears. Rachel was studying environmental science at the University of Montana, while her sister served tables at a local bar. They had a rough childhood, as their father passed away in their toddler years, leaving their mother desolate and caring for the girls all on her own, bringing various troubled boyfriends into the house throughout their teen years. The girls learned to lead on one another and only trust one another. They loved hiking the trails near the town in which they lived, observing the birds and wildlife throughout. Their mother worked a factory job and was an alcoholic, so the girls picked up the hobby of camping as a way of escaping the reality of living with such troubles. They continued this hobby throughout their early adulthood and decided to embark on a camping trip to Evergreen Trails. Their mother scolded them on their way out. The house walls were discolored and reeked of tobacco smoke, an unpleasant sensation that the girls were adamant to leave behind. They packed a few days of supplies and headed out on the 120 mile journey to the Flathead National Forest. The drive was breathtaking as they approached their destination, with the 200-foot spruce trees as far as the eye could see, with only the narrow paved road cutting through and the mountainous wonders in the foreground. Rachel turned and looked into the eyes of her sister, those large, hazel eyes, as they pulled their Subaru into a small nook off the main road. It's beautiful, she breathed to her. Audrey was speechless. She felt at home for the first time in forever. The beautiful sight of woodpeckers and chipmunks scurrying across the pine needle ridden ground, the vast open clean sky up high, the sounds of birds chirping throughout, the sounds of life. The trees and their size made the girls feel as grasshoppers. Audrey opened the rear gate, of the car and flung her little pack over her shoulder. Her long, thick brown hair blew in the cool autumn breeze. The smell of the South Fork Flathead River filled the air and entered their nostrils. It was a day to remember. Rachel hooked the can of bear spray on one of the loops of her denim elastic blend hiking shorts, and the two headed down the trail toward the secluded campsite. It was a day to remember. The bear shit and pissed on Rachel's forfeited body that lay there desolate. The animal stood over her like a caged spider, standing over a helpless feeder mouse fetus, its jaws wide open as it heavily gasped 
for oxygen after its vigorous encounter. The grizzled creature was trying to calm itself before its anticipated meal. It needed to consume her flesh on a stable, well-oxidized level. As the young woman put up quite a fight, its right eye was bleeding and it couldn't keep it open. It was beginning to swell, but the animal seemed unfazed by the encounter. The gaze it gave off was impenetrable, a soulless, foggy look in its eyes, with no expression. It was uncertain when exactly the attack took place. At some point, Rachel left the tent in the early evening, entered their makeshift porta potty, and that was the last time she was seen before the incident. It was some time thereafter when Audrey went out looking for her younger sister, only to discover the horror, the hideous, disembodied scene. There, 30 feet in front of her, was her younger sister laid out on the ground, a towering grizzly bear standing over her on all fours, as if it were protecting its catch. The skull of Rachel was facing into the direction of Audrey, where it could be clearly seen the devastating damage that was done. The skull was cracked open, blood puddling on the ground beneath it. The lifeless gaze Rachel emitted was unworldly, one eye popping out of its socket. Audrey was frozen in fear as she watched the animal look in her direction, only to focus its gaze back on its kill. A large clump of flesh hung from its lower jaw, the aroma of rot and decay being carried by the light breeze. Perhaps the smell of the animal itself, something musky and not unlike urine. The small particles entering the stunned and onlooking sister's nose. The bear lowered its massive head and chewed on Rachel's shoulder, her body shifting with it like a ragdoll being jolted with every chomp. The muscles on its large hump twitched as it yanked on the young woman's body. Its massive shoulders were at head level with Audrey. It was ignoring her. Audrey, though still alive, her soul was taken from her that moment. The girl began backing away, slowly, as darkness began to overtake the campground. She caught her bearings, and her trembling hand managed to reach into the pocket of her shorts and retrieve her cell phone as she continued backing away from the scene. As distance grew between her and the destructive scene, her heart went from seemingly not beating at all to racing. She managed to get the tent between her and the vicious scene as she could still hear the sounds of bone crunching and flesh being torn, and she could smell the fresh feces from the animal as it again marked its cache. It also also began nudging piles of dirt over the carcass with its nose, as if it were attempting to cover her up for later. Audrey turned and ran. She ran as fast as she could down the trail back toward their Subaru. She instantly contacted authorities, dropped her phone, held herself tightly in her car, and felt dead as she cried and shrieked in horror. About 35 minutes later, authorities arrived. Audrey struggled to get words out at all, but they knew the direction to head. Rachel's body was gone, nowhere to be seen, and in the thicket beyond the campsite, a shadowy dark figure lingered. The bear was shot and killed on sight. A large male Bruin, about 475 pounds, tall and lean, but aged. It's uncertain what provoked the attack but Audrey's world would never be the same again. Jeez, what do you guys think about that bear story? It's always a hard thing to stomach the loss of life especially for the young. I myself have found myself in my youth, or the later years of it perhaps, taking things for granted, perhaps not being safe enough in our everyday situations. But of course, the wonders of nature can be so awe-inspiring that perhaps some might forget the dangers that still thrive within it. On many occasion, throughout these bear stories that I tell on this channel, People, especially the young, often venture into the great forest unprepared, perhaps with a level of optimism that reaches 
heights that are too high. I know personally, I would definitely be carrying a little hand cannon in such a situation, but let me know what your thoughts are in regards to this. Would you go camping in Montana in nothing but a tent? Would you carry a means of protection? Would you take a loved one there with you? Do you live in bear country? If you've watched my other videos, you would come to find that there are also dangers with black bears. They should not be taken lightly, and those things are everywhere. I myself live in Michigan, and I've seen a slew of black bears throughout my time, and I don't even live in a territory that has a lot of them, or any of them at all for that matter. But it's important to be safe especially in bear country. But I appreciate you guys and gals for listening to this story, and if you will, like this video, and become a patron if you want to support me more. And I'll see you next time with more chilling tales from the Iceman.